Paul tells the church in, in Corinth in his second letter to them, he says, See that you also excel in this grace of giving. He doesn't say to give it a try. He doesn't say to be a little bit good at it. He says we are to be excellent at giving. Excuse me here. We are to be excellent at giving. My friends, I'm a what you would call a, a topical preacher. Okay, there's different kinds of preaching out there. There's, there's narrative preaching. There's what's called expository preaching. And we don't need to get into these real heavy. There's topical preaching. I'm a topical preacher. I'm also a little bit of an expository preacher. Because when we talk about expository preaching, we talk about exposing the text. And I always preach from the Bible. Anybody who gets into this pulpit preaches from the Bible here at Step 7. But you could say I'm as, I'm as much a topical preacher as you will find out there. I believe that the greatest sermon ever, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5 through 7, it is all topical preaching that Jesus did. He went from one topic to the next to the next and it's the best sermon ever preached. Here at step seven we like to keep our messages very basic, foundational you might say. We preach on, on forgiveness, we preach on mercy, we preach on the cross, the cross of Christ. Our, our values, we have 12 of them here at step seven. They're very foundational topics within the Christian world. We, we, we have uh, prayer, study, commitment, truth, love. We have these basic values that we're committed to around here. I will, nine times out of ten, at the very beginning of my message, I'll let you know. Today we're talking about Boom. Last week we talked about identity. Are you in Christ? What does that mean to be in Christ? Very topical. And I, I just get right to it, right out of the beginning of the message. Today, Paul tells us, see that you also excel, be excellent at this grace of giving. Question for you this morning. Are you a giver or are you a taker? Maybe a better question. What do the people in your life think you are? And please know, I'm not up here pointing fingers today. I'm preaching to the choir. I need to hear this message because there are moments when I'm a giver, but there are moments also <coughs> when I'm a taker. And I hope and pray that today I'll be more of a giver than I was yesterday. Let's, uh, Amen. let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we love you, we thank you. Lord, a special thanks for the wonderful gift that New Day gave us. What a blessing, and we thank you for that, Lord. And right now, as I always do, I just ask that you would, you would speak through me. Use me now, Lord. We love you, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Are you a giver, or are you a taker? kind of goes to the other comment we've heard before. I've also, I've been told 
that you're either part of the solution or you're part of what? Problem. The problem. Okay? Acts chapter 20. You don't need to go there. We, we read a good chunk of the book of Acts and all of a sudden we come across these red letters back there. These words of Jesus that Luke actually wrote the book of Acts, but inspired by the Holy Spirit, he, he sticks it in there. And it's a simple verse. You've all heard it. It is more blessed to what? Yeah. Than to what? Yeah. Exactly. Right out of Scripture. Red letters. So I ask again, is, is that the truth? Maybe a better question than that. How do you feel about it? Do you believe that? That it is more blessed to give than to receive? And that word blessed, there's a wonderful word. We see it quite a bit in the New Testament. It comes from the Greek word makarios, which means fully blessed. It is more blessed to give than to receive. I think one of the problems we have, and I know this has been the case in my life quite a few times, <coughs> we often have this attitude of, I will give when. I will give when I get a raise, I will give when I get that new job, I will give when I get this bill paid off, I will give when. Turn please to Mark to your left if you're still there in Corinthians. Mark chapter 12. And I'm going to read just a real short story. In my version of the NIV it's titled The Widow's Offering. 12, verse 41. <clears throat> says, Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. <coughs> Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins <laughs> worth only a fraction of a penny. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. Now there's really not a whole lot of interpretation that needs to take place here with this short story. But it surely does take away that statement, I will give when. And please know this isn't just about money here. This is about giving. Obviously part of it is our finances. Giving of our finances. But it's also giving of our time. Volunteering, serving, giving of prayer, praying for the church, praying for people. Again, it's just simply about giving. And today I want to quickly look at, at three reasons, and there's many more, but I want to look at three reasons why we should give. First one is God commands it and he also blesses it. Okay? Can't argue with that. He, he commands it and he blesses us for doing it. Turn to, turn to the book of Proverbs. Middle of the Bible. Right after that big book of Psalms. Proverbs chapter 11. <coughs>
And this part of Proverbs was written by, a lot of people would say, one of the wisest men that ever walked the face of the earth. King Solomon wrote this, inspired by the Holy Spirit, but he penned this. Proverbs chapter 11, I'm going to read verses 24 and 25. Solomon writes, One man gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. Okay? Now we can, we can take that to heart or we can just run past it, my friends. But it says, one man gives freely yet gains even more. Amen. Another one holds on and ends up impoverished. Okay, not a, not a lot of interpretation needed there also. God, God commands that we give and he blesses that action. Second reason. I believe that it shows our faith Amen. in God's provision. Giving shows our faith that, you know what, the Lord's got this and he's going to take care of me. Uh, last time I think I'll make you turn. Turn to 2 Corinthians. Right back to where we were almost. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. <coughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And... It's interesting because chapter 8, where we got our verse of the day, in my version, in the 1984 version of the, of the NIV Bible, the title of that chapter is called Generosity Encouraged. The title of the verses I'm going to read right now, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, is where I'm going to start. The title of that is simply Sowing Generously. Okay, so 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. Paul writes, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give. Not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you. So that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Keep your finger there. We see right out of the gate here that we are told that God loves a cheerful giver. That's huge. Verse 9. As it is written, He has scattered abroad His gifts to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Listen carefully to these verses coming up here. Verse 10. Now He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be made rich in every way, so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Now please know, we don't, we don't give to get. We give generously and we give with a cheerful heart. Maybe Tyson needs to come in. He needs to hear this message. <laughs> <laughs> the third reason that we should give is I believe that it shows, it, it demonstrates, it demonstrates our love for each other and it demonstrates our love for God. That's right. Bring him in here, Scott. He needs to hear this. <laughs> Verse 
My friends, it shows our love for each other, and it shows our love for God. I, uh, I want to tell you a quick story here. And it's a story about maybe one of the most generous women I've ever met in my life. A couple of you, those that have been around for a while, maybe have heard this. I haven't shared this story probably in four or five years, but Dick and Jim and Brian, Frankie, a few of you might, might have heard this story. It's a tough story. It's a really tough story. It took place, it took place about 14 years or so ago. I was, I was blessed to be with <coughs> World Vision, a wonderful nonprofit, Christian nonprofit. But after the, the genocide in Rwanda, I was blessed to go on the, the second trip of pastors that went into Rwanda after the genocide. And this particular day, we had lunch and we were told that four of us, one of a, another pastor, Pastor Dave, myself and two, two lay folks, were going to go meet this woman. And this was after lunch and we jumped in the Jeep and it was probably half an hour, 45 minute drive, pulled up to this little village and walked down this path and came upon this, this mud hut, this woman's home. And she came out and greeted us, just so happy, so excited that these, these men, these pastors from half a world came and they're coming to visit her. So we, we went into her hut, had to bend down to get in there. The, the floor was dirt. And she had, she had some benches that sat around the, the side of her of her hut. And the benches were literally, they were just two by fours. A two by four about yay big, and the legs were two by fours about that big. So it was just three pieces of a two by four nailed together, and that was the bench. And she made sure that all of us sat on the benches while she sat on the dirt floor. And our guide introduced all of us and asked her, she spoke English very well, asked her if she would share her story with us. And she, she told of the day that <coughs> the genocide was a battle between the Hutu tribe and the Tutsis. And the Hutus attacked the Tutsis. And within about 90 days, Close to a million Tutsis were slaughtered. And she told me about the day, she told us about the day when the Hutus invaded her, her tribe. She said that they, they took her husband and tied him up and pulled him out of their, their little home there. And she said, they made him watch as she was raped multiple times. They then, well, they, they made him watch. And when that was over, I, again, I said this is a tough story. They slaughtered him with machetes right in front of her and daughter. Her daughter was there also. Uh, I don't know if you could write a more traumatic situation than what she shared with us. The husband got to watch this and then they killed him in front of her. And she said that during the rapes she had also contracted the AIDS virus. So. Back then, in Africa, that you know, you didn't live long at all with with HIV. When she was done telling this story, obviously, I'm just I'm just weeping. I can't I can't.
can't control my emotions. But it's what she did afterwards that blew me away. I talk about maybe the most generous moment I've ever seen from someone. She gets done sharing this story with us, and she's got this smile on her face. And here we are, four men from America. We have flown to Africa to serve these people who just went through this incredible disaster. She looks at me and she said, Pastor, she said, can I pray for you? Oh. I almost fell off of that little stool I was sitting on. Pastor, can I pray for you? I will give when. <clears throat> Giving shows our love for each other and our love for God. Jesus said in, in Mark 12, in, in Matthew 22, when the, when the Pharisee asked him, he says, what's the greatest commandment? What does Jesus say? He says, you are to love God and to love your Father. And one of the very best ways, my friends, that we can show that love is through giving. Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, we are to excel at the grace of giving. Amen. And as I often like to do, I like to finish at the cross. The greatest gift that we have ever received, my friends, bar none, is the cross of Calvary. Jesus left heaven. Jesus left the throne room of heaven to put on flesh and bone and live that perfect life so that he could die on the cross for each and every one of us. The most generous act in the history of, of mankind. The cross of Calvary. Are you a giver or are you a taker? Let's pray. Father God, Lord, help us. Help us to know where it is that you would have us serve, where it is that we can give a little bit more Lord, I pray for this ministry. I pray that step seven will be known as one of the most giving ministries in this community. I thank you, Lord, for all your gifts, especially the gift of the cross. And I pray that you would be with each and every one of us today. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We pray this as we always do in that precious, precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.